just want to encourage you for a couple of minutes. We just came out of an amazing impartation conference. I heard one holler. Anybody enjoy impartation? Man. That was truly one of the greatest impartations. Now, I've been at conferences all over the world. I'm telling you, it was one of the best conferences I've ever been to. And I hope that you took to heart the seeds of the word that were planted in you. Things that God was saying. Pastor Marco, an amazing word on Wednesday. Ron Carpenter got vulnerable. Talked about some things that he really went deep on Thursday. How many enjoyed Ron Carpenter? It's beautiful. Daniel Kalinda on Friday. My gosh, that was incredible. I got to hold an axe. <laughs> right? And then, of course, Isaiah Saldivar on Sunday. That was amazing. Come on out with it. Thank you so much. If you turn to your Bibles, just real quick, just want to give a couple of words. I'm not going to go long. I'll get you guys out on time. But I just wanted to follow up on the impartation. And I want to talk to you tonight, Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 41. Mark chapter 4, 35 through 41. I want to talk to you about the roadmap to the promise. Every single one of us, hopefully at the beginning of this year, we did a 21-day fast. And in that 21-day fast, we were seeking God for something. We were seeking him for a word. Now, I know most of you heard the word from Pastor Marco for the church. That word is, it is the year of the harvest. Can anybody say amen? amen? Now, I want you to understand something about words. When a word is given, there is a word that is over a house. It's a corporate word. It's for everybody, and it's going to touch everybody's life. That word of the harvest was a corporate word. Your family's involved in the harvest. Your unsaved family is involved in the harvest. Your unsaved friends are involved in the harvest. Can anybody say amen? Does anybody believe it? Some of your homes, your entire home is going to get saved this year. It's involved in the harvest. But there's also, God is personal with you. And that word is going to infiltrate into your life with the harvest. But you can't just stop there. You needed to get a personal word. God has something personal. See, he's dealing with you in your own journey. There's something that you're on and there's a place that you're at in your life that the person on your right and left are not in the same place. God is so personal, he's particular with you. He wants to speak to you particularly. He wants to tell you exactly where you are in the season of your life right now, what to have. And only a lazy Christian looks for the word to come only from their pastor and doesn't seek one for themselves. So what I'm going to tell you today is many of you, and I just want to ask a show of hands because I believe this is powerful. How many of you feel God has given you personal, some kind of revelation or direction for this year? Put your hand up boldly. Look at this. Come on. Give, give a, this is powerful. You should be excited about that. Come on. Give him a hand. God has spoken to you. Now, in just a couple minutes, I'm going to tell you why you should be so excited because when God speaks, it's more than you think. Mark chapter 4, 35 through 41 and if you don't have a personal word, by the end of this message, you're going to be crying out to the Lord, I promise, and he's going to give you one. You know why? Because the Lord says, if you'll seek me, you will find. If you seek me, you will find. Mark chapter 4, 35 through 41. Listen. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. Jesus looks at his disciples. Everybody look up here. And he says, let's cross to the other side of the lake of the lake. You guys hear that? Did Jesus speak? Did he say, let's cross over? Okay, let's keep on reading. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping. <laughs> when you're in a storm, you're freaking out. Jesus is sleeping. Jesus is sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. I like it. I wonder what kind of pillow it was. We all got, how many of y'all tried enough pillows and your neck still hurt? My God. I'm with, man, I'm in that, I'm in that war right now, y'all, with my pillow. High waves were breaking into the boat and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke up and woke him up shouting, teacher, don't you even care if we drowned? When Jesus woke up, listen, 
He rebuked the wind. He didn't rebuke a demon. He didn't rebuke the devil. He spoke to that cloud over there. He spoke to the that was going past. In other words, the wind had a voice. He spoke and rebuked the wind as if it was a person and said to the waves, silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped. There was a great calm. Then he asked them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and the waves obey him. <laughs> There's two elements to any promise that comes from God. It's going to be on the screen, but I want you to write this down. Two elements to any promise that comes from God. For God to give you a promise, there's an element. There's two things that have to happen before God speaks a promise to you. Number one, God has to will it. Before he speaks it, it has to be his will. He has to want it to happen. He has to will it. And when he wills it, watch this, God's will is creative. God's will, when he wills something, it exists. The moment he wills it, it exists. The moment he wills it, it creates. He hasn't even spoken it yet. He just wants it. When God wants it, it's already there. Here's the thing. It actually wasn't created in that moment either. It was always there. Because... God's will was always in existence. For God to will something means it's already in existence. Listen very closely. Before God speaks, he must will it. Genesis 1-3. Listen to this. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Let there be light. Now, listen. The word let in the Hebrew means this. Allow it to happen again. I'm going to say that again. Follow with me. Allow it to happen again. So when he said, let there be light, he said, let it happen again. What do you mean again, Gavin? It was already existent in the spiritual realm. When he said it, it became so we could see light. But light already existed in the spirit. So when he said, let, allow it to happen again, it's because it already existed somewhere. Okay? Isaiah 9, 6. Watch this. For unto us, this is Isaiah talking, a child is born to us. A son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called wonderful, mighty prince of peace, father. Listen to these wordings. For a child is born unto us. A son is given unto us. Now, Isaiah is speaking this seven centuries before Jesus is born but he's speaking in the present tense. Why? Because when they would prophesy, they wouldn't be speaking from what they saw. They would be speaking from what their spirit saw. So to be bubbled up, what was happening is he was seeing in the spirit, the son of God was already in existence in the heart of God, in the spirit. And he was saying, unto us a child is born. Because even though he was seven centuries behind, he was in the present, in the moment. Let me just continue. Understand. Genesis 13, 4 through 5. Okay? So, unto us a child is born. This is so powerful. A son is given. Let me see what it says here. It's Revelation 13, 8. And all the people who belong to this world worship the beast. John's talking. They're the ones whose names were written in the Lamb's book of life. That belongs to the lamb who was slaughtered before the world was made. When was he slaughtered? Before the world was made. So Jesus was already crucified, not in the physical, but already in the heart of God before the earth was ever made. Jesus, the lamb, was already slain and rose again already in the heart of God before he was ever seen on earth. Ephesians 3.20. This is why God can say these words now to him who is able to carry out his purpose. Do super abundantly. More than all we ask, watch this, dare to ask, dare to think, 
infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams, according to the power that is at work within us. What is he saying? He's saying, I can do abundantly beyond, if you'll depend on me, everything you can pray. How could he say that? God doesn't speak in theories. He only speaks proven, tested fact. He can't speak in theories and then depend on you to make him truthful. Okay? So he's speaking because he went to the end of time. And he already saw every prayer that would be offered up. He listened to every prayer of every saint to the end of time. And he said, I can do better than all that if they would depend on me. He then goes to the end of time. And he looks at all of your hopes and dreams all the way. He sees every hope. He sees every dream without him. I can exceed that. So God looks at all of creation, all of the hopes, dreams, imaginations of man. And then he steps back into our time and writes it in this book through John. He says, I can do better than all because I've seen them all. God cannot speak a theory. He only speaks proven facts because he does not depend on you to make him truthful. Now, if he wills it, it exists. Number two thing that happens, he speaks it. God has to will it. When he wills it, it exists just in the spirit. Then he speaks it. Now, when he speaks to you, you got to understand, he's not speaking anything that he's guessing on. He's only, speak, he's only speaking a promise to you that he's looking at. There are body parts that are in heaven. Did you know this? The knees that are jacked up, he already has brand new ones in heaven. That's why he says you can be healed. The eyes that are blind, he already has blind eyes. Healed eyes are right there. There's a storehouse of body parts. It's already in existence. That's why when God told Pastor Marco this year, it's the year of the harvest, God was looking at the harvest and speaking to Pastor. He what? He what? He's, he's not trying to create some kind of thing inside you. He only speaks proven truth. It's existent already. Your family saved already exists. Your healed body is already in existent in a realm. Okay, let's watch what happened when he speaks. When God wills it, it exists. When God speaks it, it becomes. God's word is causative, okay? God's will is creative. God's word is causative. It causes things to happen. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and he will not do it? Has he spoken and he will not make good of what he done to fulfill it? God cannot Lie. Can somebody say amen? amen? Not he doesn't want to. It is impossible for him to lie. Do you know that truth has a name? Truth has a name. His name is Jesus. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Truth has a name. When you listen to me, you hear the truth. When you watch me walk, you're watching the truth walk. When you watch it, everything I'm doing... I am the definition of truth. I am walking truth. Jesus was God's mobile hospital walking, and he was the truth on legs. Okay? He cannot lie. What do I mean by this? Okay. If you looked at my pants, these are charcoal black pants. At least I think they are, unless I'm colorblind. Charcoal black pants. Watch this. If I told you these were red, you'd all say you're lying. But if God were to say these were red, they would become red on the spot. On the spot. Because every element that is in creation, listen, every element, every bird, every tree, every chair, every electron, every atom has been tuned to the one voice of God. Tuned. Now, you got to understand, sound is a thing called quartz. It's smaller than the atom. It's called quartz. Quartz is made up of two things, light and sound. 
The deepest we can find in any telescope is a thing called quartz, light and sound. Everything in this room is shedding some kind of light and making a sound. Why? Because at the beginning of creation, when God said, let there be, he took the conductor's baton, he tapped it on his desk, and all of creation was ready to be tuned to that voice. That's why when that voice speaks, everything in your life shifts. Your circumstances don't change his voice. His voice changes your circumstances. You can't be led by your feelings. You have to be led by the only voice that changes everything else. Okay? God said, let there be seasons. And watch what happened. He just said it once. And seasons have never stopped. Because God sets it in motion with his voice. He says it once, and it's in motion. There's always going to be summer, fall, spring, winter. It's going to continue. God's word begins it and puts it in cycle, and it doesn't stop. God's word, he's the original conductor and tuner. Do you know that sound never dies? Sound. I'm making sound. It actually never dies. Sound only diminishes. It never fully dies. So when Jesus, for instance, was on the boat and he said, peace, be still, the sound of his voice saying those words is still reverberating in the atmosphere. It never dies. It just continues. An example, Peter wants to walk on the water. What does Jesus say? If it's you, come out. And he says, come. When he spoke, the atoms, two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom began to talk to each other. And hydrogen began to talk to oxygen, and oxygen began to talk to hydrogen. They say, hey man, uh, we don't usually do this, but we gotta solidify, we gotta get hard. This man's putting his foot down, and he's gotta walk on us. You see, Peter never walked on water. Peter walked on a word. The word changes the molecular structure of water, and what you used to drown in, now you can walk on. Let me give you another example. Jesus is in the boat, and the, they've been trying to uh, catch fish all night. They haven't caught anything. And, uh, Peter, and Jesus said, listen, I want you to do one more thing. Cast your nets onto the other side. Peter's like, listen, we've done this all night. But at your word, at your word, I'm going to do it one more time. When Jesus said, cast your nets, plural, not net, nets, because when Jesus speaks, he's always going to bring in more than you thought you were. He didn't say net. He said nets. Cast your nets. What was happening? The original tuner, the voice that was at the beginning, spoke. Every fish, every whale, every shark, every dolphin, every catfish, everything was headed for that net, not just in that lake but in the Indian Ocean, in the Pacific Ocean, in the Atlantic Ocean, on every single ocean. Why? Because the moment he spoke, all of creation knows the tuning of his voice. And they pulled in two nets that were breaking. They just happened to be the first fish that got there. The Lord says to you, because he already sees it, the promise you have on your life this year, it's only contingent upon one thing. Are you going to get in agreement with what God already sees? Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you right now, these last couple minutes, through the steps of what you can expect this year to get to the promise. This is exactly the roadmap to the promise. Genesis 12, 1 through 2. I'm going to take the story of Abraham. We're going to go through it very quickly. Here we go. The Lord said to Abraham, Genesis 12, verse 1 and 2, leave your native country, your relatives, your father, and go to a land that I show you. I'm going to make you into a great nation. I'm going to bless you. Number one, God will give you the instruction. Many of you have received that. But the instruction is never something that you can do on your own. If you've heard God, realize it's not something that is going to keep you comfortable. If you're thinking God spoke, but it doesn't take God in order to do what he spoke, it wasn't God. It's just you getting with a group of people, making some plans, and trying to see what you guys can accomplish. But if God speaks... When God speaks, he requires himself for you to do it. It's going to make you uncomfortable. It's going to stretch you. It's going to be something you haven't done before. It's going to go beyond your limits. Remember, where you end is where God begins. 
Where you end is where God begins. So he gives you the instruction, number two. He then gives you the promise. Watch what he said. He said, I'm, you leave everything you know. You're not going to know any of this, but watch this. I'm going to make you into a great nation. He'll always tell you an instruction that stretches you, but then he gives you a promise of the outcome. He says, hey, but your family's going to be saved this year. Hey, but you're going to know me deeper than you've ever known me before this year. Hey, but you're going to go deeper into the, I'm going to show you revelation you've never seen. I'm going to teach you to be the minister. I'm going to increase your business. Whatever he said, he makes sure to always tell you the promise. Genesis 12, 6 through 7. Watch what happens. Number three. He'll give you the instruction. Then he tells you the promise. Here's where it gets good. Abram now is traveling on that journey. He's obeying the Lord. And it said he sets up a camp. And at that camp, it's inhabited by another people. And he calls on the Lord because the Lord appears to him in a vision. And he builds an altar and he begins to praise God. Listen to what happens. When you obey God, he gives you the instruction. He'll give you a promise. He's going to, on the journey of faith, he's going to show up and bless you with his presence. He's going to show up and bless you in ways you didn't know. You're going to get a call from your father who hasn't talked to you in three years. You're going to get, somebody's going to come up and apologize for something you already forgave them for and thought they'd never repent, but God's pricking out their heart. Some relationship is going to be restored out of nowhere. You'll get a phone call. It's God telling you and reminding you on the journey because you're obeying me, watch me show off for you. God's going to do it at different times all year. Expect it. He's going to come in. He's going to give some of y'all dreams in the night, and he's going to give you instruction. You'll write it down when you wake up. He's going to speak to you personally out of crazy situations. You'll be in a restaurant. You'll be in a Walmart this year. You'll be in some store, and somebody will come up and be like, hey, and they'll tell you, you don't even know them from anybody, but they're going to say, I, I know you don't know me, man, but, but I just feel God wants to encourage you. You're going to get that this year if you're in obedience because in the journey, God sees that you're struggling in your faith. Listen, God sees that it's a struggle, but because you're doing it, even though it's a struggle, God rewards you with himself. Number four, watch this. This is so good. I can't read all the scripture. Genesis 13, four through five. This is what happens next. There's only a couple steps. Moses, or Abraham is going, and it says he's done a lot of trips. He's lied about his sister. All kinds of stuff happens. He comes back to the place where he built an altar. Okay? Comes back to that place. And he returns there to call on the Lord. You're going to have to return to the place God spoke. Some of you need to get in your car, go back to the exact parking spot God told you your kids were going to be saved. Some of you need to go back to that McDonald's or that Walmart or get in that place in your house, that knee print that you have when you were praying and God spoke to you. You might have to revisit it. You're going to have to do it a lot of times this year because you have to remind yourself of what God said. Because listen, it ain't going to be easy to accomplish the promise. Everything in the world is going to attack your promise. Everything's going to be coming again. It ain't going to happen. You, you said this last year. It ain't going to happen this year. You think it's going to happen this year. It ain't going to happen this year. You said it last year. Everything's going to try to come against the promise. But God wants you to return to the place he spoke. And he shows up again. That's number four. You got to replace the place. Number five. Here we go. Genesis 14, 23. Abraham is offered everything by this king and he says I want to give it to you but look at what he says he says I'm not going to take anything from you so that you cannot say that you made me rich it's only God who I'm dependent upon but what happens is he's so scared he says the right thing in faith said I'm going to speak faith in spite of my feelings I want to take it from you I want to have you provide for me but because I've made God my only provider I'm going to stay in faith I'm not going to turn to the left turn to the right I'm not going to give up halfway through I'm going to stay in faith look at your neighbor and say stay in faith and here's the last point and we're going to close with this if you could start playing Jeremiah Genesis 15, 1. I could go, go in so much more, but let me just talk to you. Genesis 15, 1. After these things, he says, I don't want it because God's my provider. He goes to sleep that night. This is what God will do for you. In the middle of the night, God comes to him. <laughs> Says, Abraham, don't be afraid. I am your shield. I'm your great reward. For your obedience, the reward will be very great. Listen, even though Abram said the right thing, he was scared on the inside. Why would God say, don't be afraid, Abram, if he wasn't afraid? 
he said the right thing. But you know he was sleeping at night saying, oh, dear God, it's hard to stay in faith tonight. Oh, dear Lord, what are you doing? God, I'm choosing faith, but I don't see anything changing in my family. I don't see anything changing. Lord, what are you doing? You're going to have moments like that this year. You're going to be in bed. God, what is going on? I trust you. I do, Lord. I choose trust, but what is happening? God says, don't be afraid. For your obedience, your reward will be great. Listen, I want every person to know in here right now, God cares about everything that you're feeling. He literally sees the war for the promise. This is the roadmap. This is what you can expect this year. Watch this sermon again and again and again because you got to know what to expect because if you know what the enemy is going to do before he does it, you will not fall for his traps. This year is the year for you to obtain the promise. Every eye closed in this place. Every time you choose dependence upon God's promise, he rewards you again with himself and another promise, the cycle will continue again. These steps will happen again, and they'll happen again. It's the same every time. I want you to be encouraged that this is the year for your promise. Don't grow weary in doing good. For in due season, you're going to reap the reward. Every person with your eyes closed, I want to ask you, do you know Jesus? Is he somebody that you know personally? If you say, I don't know him, then you're going into this year without the person you really need the most. You're going to continue. This is the last day of January. Why don't you just get peace with God right now? Why don't you just say, Lord, I want you. I want you in my life, and I want to have peace. If that's you, I'm going to ask you in three seconds. It's, just, it's nothing magic with a number. I'm just going to ask you to make a statement in front of everybody. If you're not ashamed of him in front of people, he won't be ashamed of you. Would you lift your hands in one, two, three? Just, I want Jesus. Go ahead. Look at all these hands going up. Look at all these hands going up. Right there where you're at. I'm just going to ask you to stand to your feet. Just stand to your feet where you're at right here. Just stand to your feet. Stand to your feet if you lift your hands. Stand up. Stand up. Every person as you're lifting your hands, stand up. Thank you. Just stay right there. This is what's going to happen. In just one moment, I'm going to ask you to just walk up here. We're not going to embarrass you. They're going to pray for you. We're going to dismiss the service so that everybody can go get their kids. Miss Susie's been working hard, and we want to support her tonight. But listen to me. Every person who's standing, come up here right now before anybody else moves. Come up here. Come up here. Don't leave. Come up here right now. Every person. Every person. Realize that with the promise, every person who's listening to me right now, we're about to close. I want you to understand. When you have the promise, you have everything you need. Why did Jesus say, you have little faith? When they all got scared in the ship, why? Why? Everybody looking at me. Why? You know why? Here's the point. This is the point of the sermon because of this. Jesus had already told him, we're going to cross over to the other side. When he said the word, inside of the word was everything they needed to overcome the storm if you have the word you have everything you need to overcome the storms that are going to come this year if you have the word you have everything that you need every person stand to your feet right now this is 20 minutes of a sermon i hope it encouraged you we love you church we think you're amazing this sunday we're going to be starting a new series on disciples as they're praying for these people right here, let's all say this out loud. Dear Lord Jesus. Come on, everybody up here. Dear Lord Jesus, I receive you as Lord. I receive you as Savior. Forgive me of my sins. I repent. Thank you for your blood that washed me clean. I'm going to heaven. I'm no longer guilty. I'm no longer guilty. I will be a disciple. From this moment forward, amen and amen. Listen, everyone, they're going to tell you about getting baptized. We're going to take you to the next step. Pastor Christian, come on. God bless you. Come on, let's give God some praise. How many receive a word tonight? We love you, church. If you need prayer, come forward. Pastor Marco will be here this Sunday preaching a word, a brand new series this Sunday on making disciples. We love you. If you need prayer, come forward. We love to pray with you. But have a great night. God bless you.
Remember, if God is for you, there's no one who can come against you. Let's make a commitment. We got through the first month of the year. Let's make a commitment. Let's get through the second month of the year, February, right around the corner. We love you. God bless you.